So wonderful to be here. By the way, this is truly a historic event. Thank you, AUB. Thank you, Makram. Thank you, Dean Nadia, especially for making this panel and exhibition possible. Very grateful to you. Thank you. So, space without the dark could not hold the stars. Carving these words in Arabic into slate, I came to learn that pain could become the greatest teacher for compassion and that art can be a tool for transformation and change. Thank you. With all my work, I ask the question, through the expression of pain and its transmutation into absolute love, is it possible to create an object that could put an end to violence? I spent the first 15 years of my life in Lagos, Nigeria. And in 1994, I chose to move to Beirut. I was 18 years old, um, right here at AUB. The civil war had just ended, and I lived alone on a rooftop studio in Ainem Reisi. I could have gone anywhere in the world, but nothing at the time seemed more important than participating in the rebirth of this country. Migrating between these two lands, I received exposure to violence, racism, poverty, and of course, war. Africa gifted me with a connection to Mother Earth and Father Sky. And from the Middle East, I learned about the beauty of impermanence. I received my education from fruit sellers on dirt roads in Apapa, as well as books I voraciously read from the Libreri Internacional here in Ras, Ras Beirut. When the Twin Towers came crashing down in New York City, I was standing right in front of them. And in 2006, I kept a war blog under the bombs in Beirut. I've known all my life that I wanted to be an artist, but it was my upbringing rooted in compassion and empathy with others that drew me into activism and then eventually healing. So I've been conducting healing ceremonies in places that endured violence and trauma, such as the notorious former concentration camp, Khiam Prison in South Lebanon, built during the Israeli occupation. I've worked in abandoned homes in Su'il Gharib, destroyed by the USS New Jersey in the 1980s, and Remnit al Baida, the stretch of beach in Beirut that suffered from the spillage of 15,000 tons of oil into our sea during the 2006 July War. Well, all this work started from a very personal place. The first site I worked on healing was my family home in Hasbaya, South Lebanon. Our home was once occupied by the Israeli army and for over 20 years was used as a military detention center where people were imprisoned, interrogated, and even tortured. In the year 2000, when South Lebanon was liberated, I went home for the first time and took photos, not really knowing what to do with it all back then. It took me 15 years to process what happened and after a sort of descent of grace or shaktipata in Sanskrit, I started developing these ceremonies with spiritual teachings uh, informed by yogis and shamans I had been traveling around the world studying with. Well, because Drew's uh, sacred knowledge is not accessible to a lay person like myself, I've racked up an incredible amount of air miles while developing my spiritual education. And uh, somewhere in the Himalayas, I found something quite interesting. Anyone see the Druze flag anywhere? Okay. <laughs> well, uh, reversed colors. I'm not making any assumptions here. I'm just uh, sharing my findings. So um, it's also through the ceremonies and ritual that I actually create my paintings, sculptures, videos, and sound works. The ceremonies include, uh, include a process of meditation, uh, music and chanting of mantras, dancing and whirling, and a purifying fire ritual. 
From the residual carbon ashes of the fire, I create a special ink on site, and then I begin to paint. During the ritual, I work on emptying myself in order to become a hollow reed or uh, an empty vessel, in order to tell the true story of the space. By being fully present in these locations, by bearing witness, I believe we can develop a visual language that comprehends what perhaps might be so, fundament so fundamentally innate in us, our tendency towards violence, as well as our capacity to love. There's also a deeper incentive to working in these spaces of violence. I catalog and document historical atrocities. The country I have inherited is one that lacks a, a coherent history. History post-1975 is not taught in our public schools, and instead, world-class nightclubs have been built on top of sites where massacres happened. In a final act, I paint the mantras that I chant in Arabic onto small canvases and leave them permanently fixed in these spaces. They read love, mawadda, compassion or mercy, rahma, forgiveness, ghfran, and peace, salam. Salam, salam. During my daily meditation, I repeat these words in order to continue sending healing to locations even after I've left. The word is the audible manifestation of breath. And all the while, from silence to breath to sound, there is vibration, or spanda in Sanskrit, the subtle creative pulse of the universe as it manifests into living form. And it's words that have powerful healing vibrations that I choose to work with. If the entire cosmos and all that exists, from the smallest quark to the largest quasar, consists of sound vibration, nada, then we could use sound energy, even our very thoughts, or spandan thought vibration, as building blocks to create a global matrix of peace and reconciliation. Inspired by Nada Yoga, union through sound, and Dikr, repetition of devotional phrases, I use words in a creative play of consciousness into form, and form awakening into consciousness. My sculptural mantras become perfect units in a complex arabesque, multiplying and expanding through anahata, unstruck sound, and pranava, audible sound creating a bridge between universal consciousness and the physical world in an interrelationship between vibration and form within the matrix of space-time being. In 2007, I created a 40-day multidisciplinary national-scale exhibition entitled Sacred Catastrophe Healing Lebanon. I chose to exhibit in Beit Beirut, a former block of apartments once the most beautiful in Beirut, that during the Civil War was taken over by militiamen and turned into a sniper's nest. From here, hundreds of people were shot dead. The intention was to transform this once killing machine into a community platform for healing and reconciliation. The exhibition included paintings, sculptures, photography, video, and sound art that I had made during the ceremonies. I also created a large-scale installation entitled Forgiveness Times 17,000, which serves as a remembrance to the 17,000 people still declared missing from our civil war, as well as a reference to the former green line and the lush vegetation that once grew, uh, that once grew through it uh, once Beirut was split into two. The same line Beit Beirut is located on, one wooden green line for one person still declared missing. I also led a daily uh, peace ceremony and curated 40 days of workshops and lectures, everything from introduction to yoga classes to academic panel discussions. In a country where fine arts is still relatively new, this part was critical in terms of developing community engagement. It also helped the viewers develop a toolbox for their own personal self-healing. The exhibition attracted close to 10,000 viewers, perhaps a first in Lebanese history, 
The success of this project goes to show that through art, it is possible to bring communities together to heal. <laughs> During the exhibition, a man came up to me and shared with me that he was a child soldier during the war and that this was the first time he had set foot in Beit Beirut since fighting there in 1978. I was truly overwhelmed and wasn't sure what to say, so I just stayed quiet. Then he came up to me and said, um, thank you. And he pointed to one of my sculptures, which was a ceramic work um, composed of 108 tiles with the word Ghafran, forgiveness, imprinted on it. I learned then that when trying to heal a community, we must address all sides, even the man behind the gun, especially the man behind the gun. And so again, the question, is it possible to create an object that could put an end to violence? After years of work and research, asking all sorts of people from gurus in the Himalayas to quantum physicists at TED, I found my answer. It is possible. You are that object. You are the greatest work of art ever created. You can work on yourself on a personal level to become that instrument of peace because peace starts from within. And if we can tune ourselves back to the resonance of universal love, which I have come to learn is our true essence, our true, true essence, love, then everything falls into place. We are that object. Art is the tool, and love is the way, connecting, connecting us all to everything there ever was and ever will be, every atom, every leaf, every whale, every star, every breath, come together to create this beautiful fabric that is this, us, here, now, love, love, love. <laughs>